Okay, TP2 here. I am making some wine. This is just going to be some redneck wine. I have got some, uh, these are Champanelle grapes. I've got about a 50 foot row. Uh, I have squashed them, took them off the stems and squashed them and put them in here. And I, I probably will bring them to a real slow boil. Do not want to scorch them. So uh, I've got them on about a medium heat. <clears throat> I am making a mess in my wife's kitchen. I'm going to use this uh, five gallon um, water bottle and wash it out real good. I have got my sugar and water already, my sugar already dissolved in water. This, I'm doing 12 cups of sugar. Uh, I had about a gallon, <clears throat> excuse me, about a gallon of water and I put 12 cups of sugar in it. And uh, once the water got boiling, uh, pretty good then I put the sugar in it and pretty much turned off the heat and just stirred it and just to dissolve it real well one gallon of water became about a gallon and a half with the 12 cups of sugar <clears throat> so I've got this sitting here off to the side um, and again boiling down the um, the grapes and that's what they look like just all boiled down or not boiled down yet cooked down but uh, what they look like as they're cooking and as I do another step I'll get back with you okay I'm using Lauvin and this is the 71B 1122 don't know really what all that means but it says I don't know whether you can read it to suspend it at 104 to 109 degrees so what I have is this nifty thrifty thing I got from Northern Tool that tells me that is 110, so I like about a degree or two, a bit cooling. I used to use this, and that is just so handy. And also, uh, when you, when I put it in here and uh, want to suspend the yeast in it, I need to know what the temperature of this uh, is. By the way, I just scrubbed it out with a bottle brush doesn't look clean I understand that but it's been in the Sun before uh, with some water in it trying to soak out some stuff when I cleaned it out and the Sun has discolored it I, it is clean I will disinfect it I've got some uh, and I don't know what kind it is my son-in-law gave me that some kind of disinfectant one tablespoon per gallon and uh, swish it around in there and it's I think it's a no rinse but I'll probably rinse it anyway uh, and that disinfects it. Uh, some people, I think, say they can use, you can use uh, Purex or Clorox or bleach, whatever. Uh, but I haven't done that. So let's check the temp on this. Again. It says we're at 107 and a half. That fan overhead is cooling it off. I better hurry. I'm going to put this in there and it says just leave it alone and wait 15 minutes. Okay, while I'm waiting for the yeast to activate, I'm stirring this. Uh, don't want to, don't want it to scorch. That's one reason. But also, you want to crush up all the the grapes. You know, the middles of the grapes, the centers of it uh, didn't crush up too well. But uh, just looking at it now, all I see is I don't see any middles. I don't. The middle is just a kind of a clear round bit. There may be one right there. We just fogged you up, didn't I? I mean, maybe that will unfog. So uh, I'm, I'm stirring to keep them scorching, but I'm also stirring uh, to just break it up a little bit more. Make sure you get all the good stuff out of it. And the this is supposed to sit here without stirring for about uh, 15 minutes and then you stir to incorporate it into the whole thing. That's just, I don't know what I told you, that's just sugar water um, from this sugar water that I told you about, 12 cups to the gallon and uh, just poured some in here to let it cool down to the temperature that the yeast said cool it down to which was 104 to 109 and it says let it sit for about uh, 15 minutes without stirring and then stir so it's it's bubbling it's doing its thing a little bit and I'm fixing to I've already put my sanitizer in here that's going to be the cork so I'm going to sanitize everything that's got uh, that's going to touch the wine so I will I will put my sanitizer inside here wash it around rinse it 
and get ready to pour my uh, grapes and my sugar water in here. And you put the grapes, the sugar water, and then you need to get your temp down to uh, where you're not going to kill the yeast. And then um, pour your uh, grapes in there, I mean your yeast in there. Grapes, sugar, water, and yeast. That's about it. And I will come back. Okay, I poured the grapes in, and I, I'm talking about the uh, reason I, this is redneck wine, because I'm using everything. I'm using the, the uh, skins, everything. Uh, as I got down to the end, there was nothing, or not, you know, just a bunch of seeds. I tried not to get too many seeds in it, but I know it's got a bunch in it. Uh, and then the uh, I took a, a temp check of the water. It was a 107, which is between my guidelines of 104 and 109. So I poured the yeast in, and we're waiting on it to start cooking. And uh, well, again, one of the reasons we call this redneck is because I'm using the entire grape. Uh, I'm not straining it. Uh, you know, I probably could have. A friend of mine strains it, uh, maybe in cheesecloth or something, and then he reboils the. Um, the grapes again. He'll boil them the second time. Bring it, bring it up to a boil, the water up to the boil, and then put the bag of grape uh, mush back in it and let it extract just a little bit more juice. But um, anyway, this is uh, this is what I've done. Uh, I've done this with muscadine before. Turned out real well. I didn't fill it up uh, very far because I'm afraid it's going to really start coming up. If it does not by tonight. Then I'll probably add some more water to it and get it on up to right in right in here. But you want to be careful. Uh, another way to do this, Ironhead 41 style, is to poke a hole in the end of a condom and put a condom on this instead of your um, your uh, air lock. And that is one way also to do it. And if you're doing uh, the entirety of the fruit, if you're doing the whole grape like I'm doing here, sometimes that's a better way to do it. And I might have to do it on this one. I did last year on my muscadine. It started cooking so much and started rising up that it was coming up here. So I went ahead and put a condom on it because uh, it would just get up in here and foul this out and, and really probably just blow the top off of it. So the condom held it kind of in. Um, you know, it works. <laughs> it looks kind of funny, but it works. Uh, so poking a hole in a condom. Uh, now, can you? what else can you do this with? I'm going to do it with some blackberry. I may film that. Uh, muscadine. Be careful if it's wild muscadine, especially maybe any muscadine, but I know wild muscadine. My wife made some jelly last year. My son-in-law's got a bunch of muscadine vines. And my wife did some jelly, and her hands burnt or itched. I'm not—I can't remember whether it's itching or burning for about two weeks. And then she looked it up on the internet, and there's some kind of a muscadine something itch. I don't know this, that the wild muscadines uh, can give you. So I would not have crushed this up by hand, is what I'm saying. Had this been the wild muscadines, I'm going to go over there and get some. But I will—I'll uh, boil them down and maybe use a potato masher or something to. Uh, to mash them up. I'm not going to get my hands in them <laughs> unless I'm wearing some gloves. Uh, but blackberries, uh, peaches are real good. In fact, I'm going to go out. I don't have many peaches, but I'm going to go out and see what I have and see if some of them are overripe. And uh, that'll be the ones that I will get. About three and a half pounds. And I didn't mention how many pounds of grapes in here. And it's mainly the reason because I just don't know. I think there was about five or six pounds of grapes. Now if you're using just the grape juice, that's probably not enough. I believe they say three and a half pounds per gallon. And uh, so that's one reason I use the the, the whole thing. The, the whole grape is because um, I believe you get uh, more bang for your buck if you don't have, I would have had to have 15, uh, 15 pounds, 15, 15, 16, 17 pounds of grapes to to do this five gallons if I had just used the juice. If I had boiled it down, strained it off, used the juice, then you've got to do it. I think it's about three, three and a half pounds per gallon. This is a five gallon uh, carboy. So I uh, hope that gives you some information. Uh, if it's is when it starts gurgling, I'll probably uh, get back with you. But uh, this is an easy way to make you some redneck wine. Uh, it works with anything. And I'm probably going to do some apple in a minute in a different different mode. And if I do, I will show you that. But uh, that's just some redneck wine. Again, these are champanelle grapes. 
They have been, uh, the rootstock has been in East Texas for, they, the guy told me, 150 years. So they are doing well on my place. And this is my first uh, first harvest of the Champanelle. So I'm kind of tickled about it. And we'll see what, see what, uh, what comes of it. So, uh, again, blackberries would be excellent at this. In fact, I made some blackberry before. And, it, uh, you know, I'm not much of a wine person. Uh, I drink about two cups of wine a year. And that's when I'm <laughs> siphoning <laughs> One from one car point to the next. I get me a cup or two at that point. Uh, but uh, the uh, blackberry makes a great wine, um, so I'm told. So I'm told by those that, that drink wine and really, really like it, that the blackberry I made was really good. And uh, peach, pear, um, you know, anything like that, apple, just cut them up, dice them up. You really don't even have to cook them down. It, it, you know, it probably releases more of the juice, but if you're putting the whole fruit in here, it's got plenty of time to release all its juices. And you'll see that the fruit in the bottom of it, let's say you put some apple quarters in there down, down here, and uh, just uh, put maybe six inches, maybe fill up the, the bottom four to six inches with the fruit, and then do the rest of it with, with sugar, water, and water and your yeast, um, you would see that uh, when you get through and it starts to, um, uh, and you, you, you rack it, in other words, you drain it out uh, into your bottles or whatever, that what you have left in the bottom of it, the fruit that you have left is just mush. It's turned, you know, it's just, it's gotten, it's gotten all the goody out of it. So I don't think you're, uh, I don't think you're missing anything if you don't cook it, but you're certainly welcome to. I cooked this, we're just gonna see. This is my first batch of the Champanelle. So we're going to see how it goes. Now I will write on here, put a tag on here, uh, what day it is, um, how much sugar I used, that I cooked it. Um, and I'm just going to have to estimate that, that I used probably five or six pounds of grapes. Uh, and it may have been more, more than that. It may have been seven or eight. Again, I didn't weigh it. It's about a quarter of a bushel, I would say. Um, so that... Um, that's a way to make you some redneck wine. It's pretty easy. About four or five months, it'll be wine. Um, and at that point, um, you can bottle it. You can even drink it. But the longer you let it sit, the better it's going to be. So you can drink it in four or five months. In fact, you want all the fruit to settle to the bottom. That's kind of a sign it's done and when it's not perking anymore. Uh, but the, the, um, the, the, the it's going to get much better with age. So... Um, it's ready to go at four months. It's really good at a year, okay? Or even longer than that. Keep it as long as you want to. Redneck wine. Make you some. Texas Prep 2. We gone.